I am Dr. Deep Goel. I am the Director of Minimal Access Bariatric and GI Oncology at BLK Super Specialty Hospital. We have a dedicated Department of Surgical Gastro-Oncology where we are three senior consultants. We have six trainee doctors who are post uh, MS. We have two stoma nurses and we have two clerical staff. We all work in close association with each other to give the best results in colorectal cancers. Colorectal cancer, as we know, has become very common in our country. It used to be a disease of the Western world, but as urbanization is increasing, the number of this cancer is increasing in our country. There are various causes which we know of which causes cancer, especially in our country. I would like to start with the age. As the age increases, the chances of cancer increases, especially after fifth to sixth decade. Though in today's world, we are seeing a lot of these cancers in the younger generation as well. So one has to be careful. Second, I would say sex. It is seen to be more common in women rather than men. When we come to diet, it is seen to be more common in people who consume more fat and high carbohydrate diet. That's why red meat eaters are likely to have these kind of cancer more often than people who are vegetarian. Alcohol intake is clearly linked to increased incidence of colorectal cancer. Smoking is another very common link to colorectal cancer. A very important link which I would like to tell you is genetics. Somewhere most of the patients have genetic linkage and it is said 25% of the people and their following generation are likely to have these kind of cancer because of genetic link. The importance is whenever we diagnose these kind of cancers, we need to counsel the family about screening themselves to diagnose these cancers early. Because if you diagnose these cancers early, the chances of cure are very high. Polyp. Most of the times, these cancers start with polyp. Polyp is a small growth, outgrowth in the inner lining of the colon, which is normally not cancerous to start with but as time passes, they can become cancerous. So any growth in the colon or rectum, which is polyp, needs to be looked at carefully and you have to keep these patients under close follow-up to diagnose if at all they develop cancer at an early stage. Symptoms of colorectal cancer can be very, very common symptoms like bleeding in the stool. Bleeding in the stool can also happen in piles, which is a much commoner disease. But whenever there is a bleeding in the stool, we need to look at seriously and consult a specialist. It should never be taken lightly. Second important symptom is weight loss. Sometimes you feel that patient is constantly losing weight. We need to look at it carefully. Loss of appetite is another important symptom. Loss in hemoglobin, anemia, which is commonly call, called, is also a very important symptom. Now, the causes of anemia can be hundreds which are non-cancerous, but whenever there is anemia, we must look at all the causes, especially the colorectal cancer. In advanced stages, you can also have abdomen bloating. That means there is obstruction in the abdomen and patient is not able to pass motion. There is a vomiting. It's called intestinal obstruction. That can be another symptom of colorectal cancer. Fever. In advanced stages, fever can be one of the symptoms. Jaundice. If the cancer is also affecting your liver, patient can present with jaundice as well. These are some of the common symptoms. I would request that do not ignore any of these symptoms if you have and you should go to your specialist and let him investigate you. Diagnosis of colorectal cancer is actually very simple. Colonoscopy, which is an endoscopy, from the anus to look at the large intestine is the main stay of the diagnosis because you can visualize inside the lining of the colon. Also, you can take the biopsy. So you can see which part of the colon is having the cancer and you can take a biopsy to diagnose, to confirm the diagnosis. Once you confirm the diagnosis, then we need to stage the tumor because the treatment would depend upon the staging of a cancer. For staging, we do contrast CT scan to know what is the stage of the disease. Also, a PET scan can be done sometimes. It is not done routinely, but it can be done sometimes in strictly 
limited to certain kind of patients. These are the two mainstay of treatment to stage the disease. Uh, and the routine investigation like X-ray chest, CEA are also done to help in staging of the disease. Coming to the treatment of colorectal cancers, as we know, there are four stages of these cancers, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and stage 4. If this disease is diagnosed in early stage, stage 1, 2, early stage 3, then the chances of cure are very high in the tune of 80 to 90 percent. And our aim is always been to diagnose these cancers in an early stage. Coming to the modalities of the treatment, there are three kinds of modality to treat these cancers. Surgery is the number one. And most of the patients in most of the stages, surgery would be one of the mainstay of the treatment. In surgery, we remove the portion of the cancer bearing intestine, large intestine, which is called colectomy. Colectomy can be various types. It could be depending upon how much portion we remove. It can be hemicolectomy, where we remove half portion of right side or the left side. It is called right hemicolectomy or left hemicolectomy. It could be subtotal colectomy. There are more than two types of cancer in colon, then we do a subtotal colectomy. The removal of the rectum, which is called proctectomy. Whenever there is a uh, cancer in the rectum, we remove the portion of rectum. We call it low anterior resection, that is when we remove the lower part of the rectum, where we remove the rectum and join with the small intestine or remaining portion of the large intestine. It is called low anterior resection. Surgery today can be done by minimal invasive technique where we do four to five tiny punctures in the abdominal wall and do all the work which we are supposed to do. So advantage is that there is no scar, big scar in the abdomen. The recovery of the patient is much faster. There is less pain. There is less blood loss and patient recovers from the surgery and early discharge from the hospital goes back to work much early. These are the advantages of minimal access surgery. And this is the way forward most of the good centers in the world. The choice of the surgery is by minimal access technique. Let's come to chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a very important part of treatment of these kind of cancers. Depending upon the staging of the disease, chemotherapy can be given before the surgery or after the surgery. Most of the times in early cancer, chemotherapy may not be required. If it is a late cancer, maybe you require to give chemotherapy in an early stage and then surgery. Sometimes if patient is bleeding or patient is getting obstructed, then we do surgery first and give chemotherapy later. Let's look at the radiation now. Radiation also is one of the important mainstay of the treatment of colorectal cancer. In late stages of the rectal cancer, radiation is given before surgery. We then wait for six weeks for the radiation effect to come and then we do surgery. In early rectal cancers, the radiation may not be required. In some kind of early cancer, radiation may be required and they may be given after the surgery. So most of the time, our sequence of the treatment will depend upon the staging of the cancer and the preference of the treating surgeon and oncologist. We normally take these decisions under tumor board where we regularly meet with oncologist, medical oncologist and radiation oncologist and ourselves and we discuss the case in detail with all the investigations and formulate a strategy for that particular patient and then proceed. That way margin of error is less and there is a consensus in the treatment. So we try to give the best care to the patient. To know more about colorectal cancers, you can visit us at BLK Super Specialty Hospital at Pusa Road. We are in OPD 5 first floor. We have a dedicated department of Center for Digestive and Liver Diseases of which we are part where we deal with all GI oncologies and we have a lot of help available in this department to give you all the information which you want to know. You can also call on undersigned number. You can visit our website to know more information. I would request you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to know more about this particular disease.